and again, I just want to get a bit more practical, and, and, and I want to do it around renewals because I think it's the low-hanging fruit for a lot of organisations who, who are starting to learn the hard way that you don't do renewals right, uh, it's, you, you end up with churn. Um, so while you're looking for new customers and celebrating the five you've gotten, someone else is uh, celebrating the 10 that they just got off you, you know. Okay. <laughs> if you That's get a leaky customer, bucket. someone lost it's one. Leaky it's a leaky bucket. You're putting in here and it's falling off the bottom. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. So step number one, step number two, step number three, what 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 are my listeners going to do after this? What are they going to do? Just to automate renewals. Yep. Uh, it's It's really pretty simple. <laughs> I mean, there is a, you got a set of transactions again, whether you go through Scott's analysis, the way he described it, you know, look at your inflection point of cost of sale or mine or and an intersection of those two there. Everybody always has different frameworks. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it, there, there are multiple solutions, including I assets and, and we work together and how we think about it, where you literally have a a, a automated process that is going out to that body and it could you know do a proof of concept start with a hundred transactions start with a thousand start okay. with whatever um and start proving that clients will actually click renew now yeah and it's literally what it, it's literally i want to renew now yep. and you can you can pass you can pass through the yep. current payment methods you can start afresh that's a strategy decision to make and it literally goes through the transaction. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a manual process to update your ERP in the beginning. If we don't have the integration because there wasn't, there was no room in IT at the end <laughs> to build it to the beginning because that's the other barrier. Well, I mean, we're going to have to get on the roadmap in two and a half years to get that. You know what? It's a simple file. It's the data. The FTP, the crap out of it. Yeah. It's started prove that it'll work because those are all the objections we get. Well, I got, you know, it is an API, but some humans got to do something somewhere. Yeah. And that's the barrier and that process. And then prove, holy to moly, whether the channel partner can send that out, see what happens. Um, obviously, I believe before that renewal point, you know, we talked about there's a sequence of some actions that should happen before you say renew now because you want to try to set them up um, yeah. to be ready to renew. So, you know, pre that, you don't have to. You could just start with, hey, let's see if you don't want to talk to somebody inside sales, whoever at, my, at the distributor X, let's see. And then you'll you'll start to learn. Start yeah. with a hundred, start with a thousand, start with a region that has a problem and start to see how your, you know, how your end customer transacts to that. But the whole thing, it's really three steps. Give me the data, Figure out how they're going to pay. What are the accepted? Work with your finance department. And how am I going to get that back into RevRack and communicate to, ev to everybody who needs to know whatever happened? And by the way, what a great signal if you start early enough. No actions taken, no clicking. Like I said, feedback loop, to Scott's point, that somebody really better call them because yeah. they're not interacting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's the part that doesn't get automated. And that is the follow-up part. That's the informed bit that says, I've got to call someone now because nothing's happening. Yeah, if they literally no interactions through any of the communications and nothing. By the way, here's a really funny feedback loop: bounced emails. Yep, we're we're feeding. You get a bounced email, and nobody knows. You you call them thirty days before the renewal; they were gone six months ago. You get yeah. a different you get a different person you need to call. Do you yeah. think you need to know that earlier? Mm -hmm. That's you so do. important. <laughs> yeah. so, that's a really really important uh, point. Thanks thanks for raising that because that is a big problem, and sometimes it's also. Uh, too late when they call a customer. Right, exactly. they're, they're, By the time, they're like, they're oh, exactly. someone else. for six months and Jim came in and he wants to go in a different direction with a different vendor and you're, and you, the distributor, no, you never even know. Exactly. So true, Scott. Let's talk about that because just yesterday, just yesterday I had, I, I had this where like, oh, well, but the renewal wasn't due until, you know, July. Yeah, but you lost it to someone who came in and started talking about other things and it just so happens they'll take the renewal as well because they're co-terming or doing whatever they're doing on those transactions. Scott, you've been going on about this forever. Um, it, it, you know, what 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 part you, you put people on, what part you put computers on, what informs what. Take me through that workflow because I know my, my listeners want to, want to know practical. Well, mm -hmm. so from the point of view, it, the difficulty is I'm going to take them through three steps. If you're a vendor, it's one set of steps. If you're a distributor, it's another set of steps. And if you're a channel partner, it's a whole different game. Um, to the point about Wendy's bounced email thing, you absolutely have to analyze that data coming back at you. Another feedback loop. 
Um, but we always counsel our reseller partners that are using our platform to, to tell their customers to set up a distribution list because then the customer is responsible for maintaining who's getting the notification piece. And I'll give you a, a practical example of where we took renewals up into the 94s. So when I own Distribution Central, we're running the platform. We had NetApp exclusively. NetApp were three-year contracts. Um, once we got that spun up, NetApp don't want to have a renewal conversation in three years. They want a forklift upgrade conversation. So at 180 days out, it flags it to whichever uh, is the appropriate person. Now, whether it was that 180 days or a 90, 60, 30, whatever, whenever the process got to sort of 60 days, if it was a forklift upgrade or maybe 30 days on the renewal piece, is we sent an email to the end customer over the top of the reseller looking like NetApp, so it wasn't DC, looking like NetApp saying, hi, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, you have a box that's coming up for maintenance renewal. We haven't heard from your reseller. This is the reseller's contact details to Wendy's earlier point. Please give them a call because you need to action this. And if you don't deal with them anymore, because the reason it took it to the 94s is because the IT guy or girl had left or the sales rep at the channel partner had left. So the breakdown had happened between those two. We're joining it back. And if you can't deal with these people anymore, call us and we'll find you someone. And that closed that loop off. Right. So in a practical sense, that's how it used to work. And that took us from the 83s up into the 94s. I've never seen anything over 94, even HP software back in the day, they were at 94. I've never seen anyone sort of breach that because it's very difficult to do. Um, but that's a practical answer. At a distribution stack, it's a whole different information game because you are in the middle of the data flows of both ends of the pipe. You need to be collecting both sets of data and then making intelligent decisions. Now, as a distributor stack owner, I can predict a quarter out whether renewals are going to close or not because I've got all the data, which is region, part number, vendor, the reseller's likelihood of renewing contracts because you've got good resellers and bad resellers. So we can do analysis on that so that we can actually flag to the distributor where they're going to fail in renewals a quarter ahead of that renewal actually even being due. So that makes it uh, incredibly important. At the manufacturer stack, we're now trying to keep a, a, a whole channel in line. So you're going to have multiple distributors, you're going to have lots and lots of resellers. In fact, there's one vendor, well, there's more than one vendor, but they send their renewal broadcast out every month with every renewal in it to every distributor, which of course creates a nightmare because every distributor is like, go <laughs> at the same time. So again, yes, yes. You, know, you, you counsel people to collect their own data and become masters of their universe rather than slaves to potentially data flowing downhill from vendors. And yeah. that way they can start their cadence at, 95 days instead of 90. So they're five days ahead of their competitors. And that's where I've seen huge success in both the distributor and uh, reseller stack because they've moved before the competitors have realized that there's an opportunity to close. And you both, I'm seeing, I'm sure, uh, Wendy, you're seeing it too. I know Scott's seeing it, that um, vendors uh, are inclined to give rules, pricing rules to anyone who's doing this proactively so that you can actually automate the uh, merchant of record side of it as well. And, and and yes. do that for them. Um, you, you're both seeing that, which is important. Um, what about the idea of, I'm sure you, you, you've both faced this. I know I've faced this, Scott. I'm sure you've faced this. Uh, and that is, what you're telling me is fantastic. Can't I just buy it as a service from someone? Why do I have to do it? Can't <laughs> well, I he's just, he's you know, in my phone. Why, why, isn't there a service <laughs> provider out there that does this, you know? And the reality is... You, you, there's no service provider for a spreadsheet. You know, you get value of it by by, by doing something special with a basic technology, right? Um, you, 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 you never, you know, you, know, you, you add value to what you're doing based on the tools that you're selling. So you still own a certain level of strategy when you get out there. If you want to do it better than anyone else, what we're providing is competitive advantage. But the tool starts with the ability to execute on competitive advantage because it's designed to do that. It's designed to execute on a strategy, to a land strategy, an expand strategy, and uh, to a protection strategy, but also the elephant in the room. These renewals are happening sometimes daily, weekly, monthly. Talking about renew uh, automating renewals when it's no longer a year, it's, 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 a, it's a week. 
Well, I mean, you know, you're dead if you don't automate renewals from a consumption or subscription point of view. And also from consumption, it's not simply just doing the renewal cadence or even collecting the cash as a regular thing. It's actually about monitoring their consumption. So we've built um, platforms for various uh, US manufacturers that as soon as the consumption starts to drop, alarm bells go off. And we found people in China and India and various other parts of the world that were fudging reports because they knew how the system was analyzing well, the data. And it wasn't until the alarm bells went off in our system to say they've gone from 3,000 contracts a month to like one and a half thousand to 100. Hmm. You've got to be very, like, you know, renewals are sensitive, but consumption renewals, monthly consumption renewals are ultra sensitive for churn. Yeah, yeah. Wendy, you got anything? No, I just think, you know, consumption is, it's, it's rising, but it is still the, the smaller, you know, I mean, it's increasing, of course, of course. And this was, we were talking about this a lot at TSIA this week. I think a lot of people are leading the way, but, you know, we still, it was 22% of our transactions are still, in, are still perpetual. Yeah. So we're, you know, you're on the whole continuum and that's where you've got to understand your product, blah, 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 the consultant and me. So yeah, I, I, I'm like, wow, still 22%. We're 78% subscription. Yeah. Well, 70, and then so whatever perpetual and a little bit of consumption um mm. here, here we've talked about it a little bit but i think um the whole industry is out of reckoning <laughs> everyone and that was the big theme definitely um and so i would say you know this is the other big debate about the renewals why you can't automate we haven't said it yet so i just want to say it once whether it's daily weekly monthly yearly every three years um everyone who touches it from a human goes but that's the moment of the upsell Yep. So I can't automate because I got to talk to the customer. And that's where what everything Scott just said is a paradigm shift to realize that there's so many moments. And why is it just the renewal? I just wanted to tie that because that allows you with your upsells, premier support, manage a new, bring a new managed service offering in yep. and bringing that to the customer base. So I would just say we haven't talked as much about customer lifetime value. So it's a whole wholesale mindset change. Yeah, not absolutely. daily, weekly, monthly, but about your strategy to, to grow your business, to be more proactive. And that can be done with automation and you got to change it. Cause if you're waiting until, like you said, 30 yeah. days, 90 days, 90 days, someone's calling 95 before they've got a managed service offering and yada, yada, yada. And you're yep. sitting up here waiting for your salesperson to call 30 days before you're dead. Yep. Yeah, you're yeah, dead. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so I, I want I want to finish with that. And you've both been very very generous with your time, and thank you. This has been phenomenal. Um, what a masterclass! Um, but uh, the 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 point that you that you were you were raising, Wendy, uh, if I automate, I can't I can't um, be ahead of it. No, no, no. The automation informs your ability to add value to a customer by giving you what you need to go and tell them. All right. Um, so it, it, it's 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 that important, but um, when we approach uh, potential customers who would talk about, but my ERP system will do it. No, it doesn't. Uh, but my CRM system do it. No, it doesn't. Uh, no, just, you know, no, no. My spreadsheet, no, it doesn't. Um, and the answer is usually what, what, what I find usually works is, no, we'll sit in front of it because what we'll do is I'll amalgamate all that opportunity that you have. Take that. We need that data. Take that data so we can get get proactive start doing things that you otherwise wouldn't have, which is giving your customer value, which is something they can't do without. So if you're not giving them something that they can't do without, then you're just commodity, right? But you also mentioned something really important, which is it's a change in business model. It's actually a change in the way you're asking people to do business. It's a more contemporary and a real one because it talks to, when you if you talk to enough end users, they're telling you that I'm third, fourth, fifth, sixth generation. I know what I want, buddy. I just need to know how I'm going to get this easy. Definitely don't want 22 phone calls to get no. what I want. <laughs> well, no, that's 22. that was 22 between all the channel partners involved yeah. in the deal. <laughs> yeah. So give me some, both of you, based on what I just said, give me some war stories, war stories on where 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 you were able to fix that or well, let me, let me jump someone in. didn't do it and what happened. Let me jump in. We've got a... Um, a particularly large deal at the moment. There's $28 million worth of renewal transactions that were not collected by a company last financial year, which they know about simply because they don't have the people or resources to do it. So one of our customers 
has done the pitch and they're handing that over holus bolus, not waiting for internal systems, not waiting for ERP systems, et cetera, et cetera, so that they can go and just deal with it because we haven't got time and we don't have resources anymore and everyone's laying off lots yeah. of people. So yeah. in this day and age, if you, you know, there's been layoffs as recent as yesterday. In this day and age, if you are not automating, and I'll tell you another little story, there's a company that's gotten rid of so many people. They want to automate, but they don't have the people to actually roll out the automation. <laughs> I've heard that one too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like crazy sometimes. Anyway, maybe it's just no, me. I, and I love that. I think that everybody's looking at that. Um, here, here's a, and you know, again, the former consultant in me says people need quick wins. We would always coach our clients to say, take some baby steps. And that's where again, Scott, I know like you're right about getting the whole, you know, organization, it's like probably the, you know, going to the Rome, the Catholic <laughs> church and like trying to get everybody to like, you know, <laughs> buy in. But, um, you know, I'm a big fan of, of quick wins and showing the incremental. So we just closed a deal a couple of weeks ago to your, actually to your point, your distributors or resellers, they didn't renew, do a win back strategy yeah. Yeah, Start yeah. There with automation. And that's a hundred percent automated. Yeah. And that we're talking to another huge software company. They're like, yeah, why not just start there and show that. And even if we get whatever millions of dollars. Um, so I, I, I get it that it's hard. I did work at Oracle. Yahoo was a $10 billion company when I was there and I was a big change agent, very different sales process than this. And I started with incrementality because again, it can be so overwhelming getting the whole church and state and everybody to say, hallelujah, mother, you know, <laughs> we're going to do this. And then the ERP and everybody's laid off. So I think what I'm counseling people is really, and I just had a client say this to me that we didn't, we didn't, we didn't win. Their IT department is on failed third attempt of trying to build it themselves. So we yeah. haven't even brought in the you know, build it or buy. And, and, he, and he said, you know, we, we screwed up. We tried to go for too much and we sort of started, should have started with a proof of concept. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, marketers are really good. I just bring in my old marketing world. Marketers are really good at testing. It's kind of their DNA. And okay. I think that could serve us well to get more agile and try stuff. And that's okay. what I would say is pick an area of pain point, like what Scott described, win backs, or you know what? The, the one, the other one we're hearing a lot of, if I have, if I can see that my channel hasn't done anything and it's 30 days before the renewal, I'm going to do exactly what you described, Scott. Hey, here's the renewal. Please call your, or exactly if you've got somebody else. So there are these, these ways to get started and then you get a win and you say, okay, what's next on the roadmap? And yeah, then eventually yeah. you'll be wanting to buy the whole kit and caboodle with Scott's platform in mind. <laughs> but that's a big nut to bite off. And I do yeah. acknowledge we've all been there. It yeah, is. it is because you're, you're you are asking people to change the way that they do business and also put something into their into their organisation that is as important as ERP or as important as, as 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 Salesforce or anything like that for their business. But you just have to change to go the way that the consumer wants to take, buy technology from you. And procurement is so important here, right? Uh, it's it, or, and they just want that because their prime contract is talking to buyers. And you don't have to have sold them everything that they've bought. If you're managing that on a platform like 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 you guys have got, and especially the combined one with the you know the the, the quote to cash done so well for um for for every campaign, uh, you're adding value. You're giving value. They can't do without you. You win. Uh, they're not looking at anyone else. And there goes there goes the uh, fear of churn because it's proactive. If you're proactive, you're not going to get churn. That's going to happen. Scott, do you have any last words before I let you both go? Uh, I think, you know, from a messaging point of view, because, we, you know, Wendy and I are here to sell things, but um, from a messaging point of view, if you bolt our platform onto Clever Bridges platform, you get an unparalleled, I mean, no one can do what we collectively can do in yeah. any transactional sense, especially because we're both international companies, not, you know, yeah. um, siloed in any particular country. No one can do what we do collectively. Yes, there are going to be times when it's just Wendy's business because you just want the the you know renewal quote to cash piece. Sometimes it's just going to be us because you want the whole life cycle and channel you know guts running inside of it. But I counsel you if you want the super solution in baby steps to Wendy's point earlier, uh, join both of those platforms up and and then you know focus your people on the more creative and productive things that you can yeah. do in the organisation to take the. The boring, I always call it the boring load, but, you know, the operational load away from those people that are, are currently 
punching in orders or you're making your resellers punch in orders, which is just an absolute waste of time. Wow, that's so important. Well said, mate. I really appreciate you saying that because that kind of like is the case that you take back to sea level and say, okay, we need to do this and this is why. That's that, That's really good. I'll, I'll listen to that five more times so I could remember it. Um, when Nick, you start, yeah, yeah, yeah. anything else, go for it. Yeah, it just builds off of that. These are tough times. I lived through the dot-com and I was a poster child company. My CEO is on the cover of Fortune magazine. So I I lived the whole thing. These, this is not going to be as bad as that, but it's it's going to be a while before it gets better. The tone and the thing, it feels scary. You want to hunker down and say, well, I'm just going to kind of stay here and keep doing what I'm doing. Now is the time to be a leader. And to exactly to Scott's point, your C-suite is looking for people with ideas to yeah, make changes organization to drive more profitability to grow revenue yeah. to reduce churn um and it can feel you know be a change agent this yeah. is the time if you want to have an impact on your organization and it feels like a scary time to do that and i've been there but this is actually the perfect time to think about it because people are open i'm hearing more and more companies we talked to three years ago who said i'll never do that they've come back and said you know i'm going to consider making some changes so yeah. you're in good company out there so yeah. have the courage to be a change agent uh, couldn't couldn't have said it better. That's 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 perfect, and that's what the C suite want. They actually want that. Um, they they don't want labour pains. They want babies, and they want people to bring the ability to execute as well. And given that we have these tools, we can do that. So we're affecting strategy, and also making it practical and doable. Guys, thank you so much. That was amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, I know that these will be you know thrown around different organizations saying, this is how we need to do it, we need to do it, we need to do it. And I'm going to get smashed in my my, my, my my DMs because that's just what usually happens, but I've got nothing better to do, right? Um, thanks again, guys. And everyone, we, we, we've got some beautiful channel talks lined up going forward. Um, we will continue with our current uh, focus on amazing women uh, and, 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 and bringing uh, that kind of thought leadership to light. Um, Keep winning, keep listening, and uh, till next time. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it.